and welcome back to our channel. In this video, we will be showing you what we have eaten on our trip to Italy. This week, we would like to show you the delicious food that we have tried in Emilia Romana. Bologna is a paradise for food lovers. And for this city, on the top of our list was tagliatelle al ragù, which is original version of the dish that we know called spaghetti alla bolognese. Those two may look similar, but they taste differently. And therefore, I think you should definitely go for the original version. To eat this traditional meal, we went to Trattoria Valerio, which was very cozy, family-run restaurant. Tagliatelle al ragù consists of tagliatelle, which is a flat Italian pasta that comes from two regions. One is Emilia Romana and the other one is Marga. Traditionally, tagliatelle are made with egg and therefore are so nice and yellow. Ragù alla bolognese is a meat sauce that got very popular in the 18th century. The typical ingredients are minced meat from beef, onion, celery, carrot, as well as pancetta, and small amount, underlined, small amount of tomato paste or tomatoes. Another dish on the top of our list was the graminga alla salsiccia. Graminga is a short pasta that shaped resembles a half circle with one end curled in. And this type of pasta also traditionally contains egg. Traditionally, it is served with a white sauce that is made from onion sausage that was actually pretty spicy. Olive oil, white wine, cream, salt, pepper and apparently rosemary. One I have ordered had also parsley on the top. Oh my goodness, was it, what a treat that was. I don't know where I'm gonna find this sausage and pasta in Frankfurt, but I am making this dish. Another thing that surprised us was the type of bread that was served with it. We love the gnocco fritto, which is a bread that was mainly made from flour, water and lard. This one is also specialty from Emilia Romana. And we also liked this kind of cracker. That one was called spigole and it was also fried and covered with salt. It was a lovely addition to our antipasto. And we also tried this kind of funny looking bread that was probably called casereccio, but I'm not sure about it. Lambrusco is a wine and a grape that you have to try in Bologna. It comes actually from Emilia Romana and Lombardy and it's got a different level of dryness. So I'm sure that you're gonna find one that you like. Along with all those delicious foods, another thing that you should try in Bologna is lasagna alla bolognese. Lasagna is made from the pasta dough that is made with spinach, but correct me if I'm wrong. The one that we had had seven layers covered with way more bechamel sauce than ragu. And that surprised us a lot, but it's always good to know what we do wrong in the kitchen. And by the way, Max has also got his lasagna alla bolognese, but without salt. And I really cannot say if he liked it. Another pasta that you should try is called passatelli, and this is also very particular to Emilia Romana region. This particular pasta is made with parmesan, breadcrumbs, eggs, flour, and also sometimes spiced with nutmeg. The texture of the pasta is completely different, but delicious. If you try it, you will never forget it, because this pasta is very unusual. The next typical dish for Bologna is called cotletta alla bolognese and this one is a veal cotlet that is breaded in eggs, flour and breadcrumbs, then fried in lard or butter, covered with a slice of raw ham as well as parmesan cheese and then briefly sprinkled with a meat broth. Finally, it is baked in the oven until the cheese has melted. A very impressive variation of schnitzel, I need to tell you. This English soup, yes, English soup, because this is the name translated to English of this beautiful cake. This wonderful cake is made of sponge cake or ladyfingers, like in this example, that are dipped in herb liqueur and layered with a thick egg custard, as well as dark chocolate cream, and sometimes also topped with additional ingredients like cream or almonds. Another dessert that we have tried, it was called crema al mascarpone. 
This particular one was served with a cocoa powder on the top. The dessert doesn't come from Emilia Romana, but it was found on almost every menu in their Italian restaurants. To make this cream, you only need mascarpone, sugar and egg. Matthias did love it a lot. And by the way, this is how it looks like to travel with a baby and film. No cooperation from Max side at this age. Balsamic vinegar is a condiment that you have to try when traveling to Emilia Romana. To get to know this wonderful product, we went actually to a balsamic vinegar producer. The traditional version is made from reduced grape must that age for several years in different wooden barrels. The one that we bought was made of Trebbiano and Lambrusco grapes. And this one is already pretty thick. The balsamic vinegar that we bought had a red label and that means that it was aged for at least 12 years. But there are also balsamic vinegars with a silver and a gold one that are aged for much longer. If you have any recipes with this kind of balsamic vinegar, please share them in the description box down below. Bologna is also well known for its wonderful hams. The most typical one would be the mortadella, which is made from ground heat cured pork and also those small cubes that you can see, this is a pork fat. And by the way, there are also some mortadellas that are made with pistachios. We bought our in a butcher shop called Simoni and that was seriously the only mortadella that I liked. In Bologna, they have also have amazing prosciutto, which is ham that is uncooked and unsmoked, only dry cured. And culatello, which is also cured meat, typical um, of the province of Parma, that is even more tasty. All those are served with tigelle, which are round flat breads. Those are made from flour, water, salt and yeast and prepared in aluminium pan over a gas cooker. In Bologna, you can find tortellini on every corner. There are a lot of shops that are making them freshly, but you can also have them in the restaurant in many different ways. We bought our tortellini in the restaurant called Sfolia Rina, and those were small ones filled with meat. Look, you can see straight away that it, those were made by hand. We really wanted to try those in the broth, so the traditional version of it. And we have actually found a special broth in the supermarket created exactly for this purpose. We did really love this simple soup. In the restaurant, we have also eaten those with zabayone from Parmesan cheese. And those were tortellini that were served with this wonderful sauce that was made from egg yolk, Parmesan cheese, meat broth, as well as butter and nutmeg. From what Matthias was saying, those were the best tortellini that he has ever had. I went for a very similar pasta that was called tortelloni and this one was larger but had the same shape. Apparently tortellini have usually meat-based filling and tortelloni are filled with ricotta and spinach or parsley. I think mine was filled with a little bit of spinach. My tortelloni was served with butter and sage. We also ate tortelloni in other restaurants and those ones were actually served with bacon, parmesan cheese and balsamico. We really did like this combination. That was very unexpected. Also parmesan comes from Emilia Romana and Lombardy. So it's something that you might want to take home from Bologna. It ages minimum 12 months. You can eat it in many different ways, but also with balsamic vinegar. In the restaurant Sfolia Rina, we also tried some of the cakes. I went for the typical Italian crostata. From what I understood, crostata is an Italian pie that is served with a different kind of fillings and toppings. Nowadays, they use a short crust pastry to make the dough and I find it extremely delicious. The one I had was served with frutti di bosco, so with the fruits and berries that you can find in the forest. But in bakeries, we found also other fillings like apricots, cherries, peach and other berries. And Matthias went for something traditional from Emilia Romana and this is called torta tenerina. 
The cake is extremely delicious and it's very simple, especially from the ingredients, because it contains mostly powdered chocolate, butter, eggs, sugar, and a bit of flour. And it's baked only 20 to 25 minutes. The cake was served with powdered sugar on the top and mascarpone cream on the side. Of course, after all this, I also had a lovely espresso. Oh, Bologna, we will be back as soon as possible. In Bologna, we have also found a pastry shop that made a small versions of traditional Italian pastries. It is a very good idea if you really want to try many different things. And now I'm not going to mention all the stuff that we bought because we also bought pastry from another region. But I really need to mention the torta di riso, which is a speciality from Bologna. And as the name suggests, the cake is made with rice. And that's the one that is used for risotto. Apart from rice, the cake was very moist and delicious. And the last thing that I'm going to mention is ragu di salsiccia, so the bolognese sauce uh, that is mainly made of sausage. The sauce contains uh, sausage meat, raw cured pork, pancetta, so the bacon, olive oil, white wine, garlic, salt, pepper, tomatoes and tomato puree. It did really taste it different, but I found the idea great. So we will be looking for a nice recipe to make it at home. Oh my goodness, what a culinary journey that was. I really hope that we will be coming back very soon to Italy for even more food. Please let me know in the comments down below if you also like Italian food and if yes, please let me know what is your favorite Italian dish. And although the Italians cook really well, we've been traveling for two weeks and we really miss the German bread. Next week we'll be focusing again on the German cuisine, so please stay tuned for that. Stay healthy and I see you very, very soon. Bye!